Hi, this is Benny with Dark Nectar Cooperative. Um, I'm going to talk about diagnosing nutrient deficiencies, uh, particularly related to intervenal chlorosis. So right now I'm in this um, little greenhouse space of my friends that is um, growing tomatoes um, in using the worm tap, using, so it's vermiponic, it's a hydroponic with a vermiponic solution. Um, uh, yeah, so, and this is a deep water culture in here, um, similar to like a Dutch bucket setup. There's hydrogen in it. And she asked me what sort of deficiency this tomato has. So if you look at this leaf, um, you can see it's a little bit, it's, it's not like a consistent green throughout. There's um, like a lighter green or even maybe a little bit of yellow between the veins. So that's called intervenal chlorosis. Um, there's two primary causes of that. That could either be a magnesium deficiency or an iron deficiency. A magnesium deficiency will usually show up in the older leaves because it's a mobile nutrient and iron deficiency will usually show up in the younger leaves because it's an immobile nutrient. What we have here is definite, we definitely have intervenal chlorosis in the older leaves and it looks like there is some in the younger leaves, so then it's it's not really that clear which sort of deficiency it is. So the next thing we can do is test the pH because pH, we know that iron is more available um, below 6.5 pH and magnesium is more available above 6.5 pH. So by seeing where the pH is at, we can also get a feeling of, of what sort of, yeah, if it's, which one is more available. So we have this uh, Dark Nectar Vermiponic Test Kit right here that I hope you have because it's really the most comprehensive um, test for aquaponics or vermiponics or any sort of organic hydroponics to understand um, your nutrients and I'm just gonna go ahead and test all of them um, which you know includes nitrogen it includes the hardness it includes pH the electrical conductivity um, and then we'll look at those results can see that the electrical conductivity is 2250 micro siemens per centimeter it's a little high but it's pretty good um, ammonia levels right here 0.25 parts per million nitrate levels is probably about three parts per million pH is at 6, the uh, KH was 2 drops, which is 36 parts per million, so the carbonates, the amount of carbonates were 36 parts per million. The GH was 40 drops, which is really high, which means there's lots of micronutrients in there. Um, You'll find generally for vermiponics, the micronutrient levels are easily five times what you would see in um, other hydroponic solutions. So it's um, 18 parts per million per drop. So that's um, probably around 600-ish, 700. 
Um, and then the calcium was 14 drops, um, which is also high. So how we calculate magnesium, so we can't test for iron from this. But what we're trying to eliminate is if it is a magnesium deficiency. Um, and even though this test doesn't have magnesium explicitly in it, we can actually calculate the magnesium from the general hardness, so the GH, minus the calcium, because calcium roughly takes up about 50, per, like accounts for about 50% of the, the total minerals that are, that exist under general hardness. And then magnesium, I think, is about a third of that. Um, so what we do is there's a formula that we provide with this kit that is going to let you calculate what is the magnesium level. Um, yeah, the magnesium level in the solution, which is general hardness minus calcium plus some factors. So without, uh, we'll, we'll do a screenshot of that formula so you, so you can see it, but I can already tell you that because the general hardness and the calcium are so high, there's almost definitely not a magnesium deficiency. Um, although you might say, wait a second, Benny, um, you just said the pH was six and that magnesium becomes less available under 6.5. That's true, um, however, diagnosing these things is never that simple and there's always multiple factors going on. One is, she tested this last night and realized that last night the pH was at an eight. Um, and so then she adjusted the pH and now it's at six, which is actually a pretty big adjustment. Um, so, the it's, um, kind of a little deceptive here, but that's important. Like when you're doing these diagnoses, you got to get the whole story because you never like these things are complex. Um, so the even though the old growth is showing intervenal chlorosis, it's actually likely. What I'm gonna say is this is actually an iron deficiency, and the reason why the old growth is showing iron deficiency is because it's actually just had an iron deficiency the whole time. And you know, tomatoes grow really fast, so this is, these plants are only two weeks old. You know, they're, they're 24 inches, they're, they're about two feet tall. Um, and so in a vermiponic system in a greenhouse like we have here, um, this is this is two weeks of growth, so it's pretty likely that there the pH was running high from the beginning um, and which made the iron unavailable and So you're seeing basically intervenal chlorosis throughout the whole plant. We also know from lab tests that um, our the worm tap so the worm tap using just kitchen scraps. So this, these are run off the worm tap and um, kitchen scraps are being added to the worm tap almost indiscriminately. So it's just whatever people are eating in the household minus citrus. Um, and we've found from many tests that our iron levels in, in the nutrient solution they come out four times higher than what is required by the plant. So that's also another tip off to me um, is that it's in relation to pH is that when we're talking about iron deficiency, it's, it's not so much that there's not iron there, it's that the iron is not available. And the reason why it's not available is because the pH has been maintained too high during, during the growth of the plant. So yeah, so that's the, that's the diagnosis that I have for it. Um, I hope that was helpful. Please, you know, if you have any more questions or comments or maybe, you know, this, I'm, I certainly don't know everything, so please 
if if you have some wisdom, knowledge, experience that I haven't mentioned, please talk about it in the comments um, because we're all in this together trying to develop our understanding of the plants. Please share this and thank you. Bye.